Hey everybody, this is Andrew with Practical Bible Studies, and today I was having a few thoughts about Game of Thrones. I've just got done making my video on how to watch the show, and I started thinking, why am I watching it? Why is it so appealing to so many people? And I actually came up with um, a couple of theories, and I, I think you might be interested to hear what I have to say. So everybody knows that the Red God in Game of Thrones is called Hrolor, which I don't know where the name came from. I, I didn't read past the first book. I thought it was a little bit too graphic, but I have watched a lot of the show, and I, I've noticed that the Red God seems as if he is the antithesis of our God. I think the Red God is Satan in the show. Now, Satan has his own plan in our world, which he's going to fail, of course, and just as R'hllor does in the TV show Game of Thrones. We already know that he's a murderer, and spoiler alert for the first few seasons here, that R'hllor kills Stannis' daughter. Well, of course, he does that through one of his minions, his Red Priestess. And he's got all these followers that are red, red, red. And if you know anything about George R. R. Martin, he is definitely a non-religious person. And it's interesting the way that he, he posits this. And he says that he would rather be in a magic centered religion than anything else when he was asked about it. So I thought that was kind of funny. And also, they call R'hllor the Lord of Light, which if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, it says, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. So what does that mean? Is the Red Priestess satanic? Is this a bunch of Satan worshippers? Sure, you could look at it that way. Well, that's what George R. R. Martin likes. Now, I'm not saying George R. R. Martin is necessarily a Satan worshipper. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but you can kind of see how this road is appealing. In the newest season, there's an interesting cameo from quarterback Aaron Rodgers from the Green Bay Packers, and he famously had a line where he said that God should be kept out of football, and I'm paraphrasing there because I don't remember the exact quote. You'll have to look it up, but it seems like a lot of the characters love of the actors on the show also have a similar point of view of God, and that's common in Hollywood, sure, and Game of Thrones isn't known to be a godly show, but it is very interesting, and I'm not sure that Christians should go into the show believing it's some kind of metaphor. I know in the most recent season, and yes, there is a spoiler alert for season 8, I'll give you three seconds to shut this video off. But standing in the middle of the rubble, you have a white horse, or rather a pale horse, that Arya Stark jumps on and rides away. This sort of echoes Revelation 6, starting at verse 7. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. And they were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill, with a sword, and with famine, and pestilence, and by wild beasts of the earth. Now, you could say that Arya is is death because, well, she killed the Night King. She was death. She's one of the faceless men. Maybe the whole show is saying that she is the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but I think that's also a stretch. I'm not sure if the writing is that creative, and it's not always appropriate to look for biblical themes in fiction. But Christians should be aware of some of these things, how fiction seeks to bring us away from the Bible instead of to it. If you look at this message, it's saying the Lord of Light is good, and the people who serve it are good, but not to us, not to Christians. Christians. We, we see the opposite, that Satan is the one behind all of this. And indeed, Satan is the god of this world. That's in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. If you want to look at some of the things that Game of Thrones gets wrong, I, I do recommend looking at 2 Corinthians. It has a lot of things that seem to apply to this show. It's, it's kind of interesting. But enough of my tinfoil hat theories. If you have a different theory than I have, why don't you leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good day. God bless.